All Blacks Bolters, folks. It's that time of year we're getting to the business end of Super Rugby. It's time to look at some uncapped New Zealand players to see who in a Rugby World Cup year could potentially slot into that All Black squad. There's going to be injuries. We've already seen Sever Reese. Uh, he's got a long-term injury, so he's kind of one guy who's already out of the frame for the Rugby World Cup. But yeah, we'll go through five guys in no particular order. Uh, who may be putting their hands up for the Rugby World Cup, and you guys can let us know your thoughts. Uh, for this one, there's a written piece also over on Planet Rugby, so I'll put a link down in the description if you want to read about it. There's probably going to be a few more details there that I might miss in the vid, but um, yeah, check out the article as well as the vid. Uh, first guy I've gone with is a halfback. I feel like a lot of uh, New Zealand rugby fans are pretty excited about an old Cam Roy guard from the Hurricanes. Um, proper attacking threat, I guess, is what you would say about Cam Roygaard. Like, I've got some stats. All of these stats are from the first 12 rounds of Super Rugby, like, as I've just recorded this, uh, vid. Uh, we're up to 13, but based on round 12, like, the guy is incredible in terms of his just pure attacking numbers. And it seems like, from a kind of outside point of view, he might be a good foil for old Aaron Smith, who's, you know, the kind of master distributor. He could be the kind of key player you could bring off the bench if you wanted to add a bit of impact like we used to get from kind of TJ Pedernani. He's only 22 years old. Uh, he's already been in the frame with the All Blacks 15 uh, last year, but never kind of properly capped himself. Um, for, for halfbacks in New Zealand, well, halfbacks overall, he's got the most tries uh, as of round 12. He's got the most run meters of any New Zealand halfback, the most defenders beaten, the most clean breaks. Like he had nine. I think the next best guy had five. The guy loves a run. Um, even his defense tackles at like 80%, which is pretty decent for kind of a, uh, I want to say wee fella, but he's not that small. Uh, he's got a good kicking game, but honestly, if you're going to pick Cam Roygaard, you're picking him because he can bring something different in terms of his attacking game. He loves a run. Like if you're looking at his option taking between kind of uh, pass, kick, or run, 12% of his game is run. Now to put that into context... Fakatava, who's also kind of one of those guys uh, vying for that, I would maybe assume, substitute spot for the All Blacks. He's at 8%. So Roy Gard runs more than Fakatava, and Smith, like I mentioned, who's our kind of out-and-out -out distributor, is at 4%. So Roy Gard chooses to run a lot more than uh, at least a couple of Highlanders uh, halfbacks. That seems to be his thing. And he does it really well. So like I mentioned, he's he brings a different game from what you would get from someone like an Aaron Smith. Only 22 years old. He's been in the All Blacks 15, so he's in the framework. Whether they uh, they pick him at all for 2023 still remains to be seen. But um, from what we've seen of him in Super Rugby, very, very, very encouraging. Uh, time for a Chief. And I mentioned um, Sebra Reese being injured. So there's a potential spot in the outside backs. And shooter, Sean Stevenson, he's been playing pretty well. Now, I feel like old shooter is at a point where... If he doesn't get picked, he probably leaves. I believe his contract is up in 2023. I haven't seen him having signed an extension, and I haven't seen him being confirmed overseas. Uh, I know he's been linked with NRL clubs before. He's another one who's been in the All Blacks 15. He's mostly been playing fullback this year, but we know uh, he's played, I think he's played at least once right wing this year, and he's played a lot of right wing in the past. So in terms of guys who could slot in in a potential uh, you know, cover spot for Sever Reese. Sean Stevenson's right up there. Um, for outside backs this year, man, most clean breaks, most try assists of any New Zealand outside back. Like, he's setting up really good plays with that offload game of his, putting a lot of boot to ball, um, scoring tries for mad, for days, like mad. Um, what can I say? His defensive game's always been a bit of a question. I checked his tackling numbers, and it was at, like, 73%, which is not great. But it's also not terrible in terms of outside backs. The outside backs tend to kind of max out at around 80%. A lot of them, like he's higher than like David Harvey, for example, who's slotted into different um, spots around the Crusaders back line. But um, yeah, I do think if you're looking for an attacking weapon who can cover fullback, who can cover the wings, and who's just in a rich vein of form, you could certainly do worse than old uh, than Sean Stevenson. So yeah, another potential option, as I said, at 26 it's probably now or never, I guess, based on how guys tend to leave NZ if they don't make the All Blacks. Uh, a couple of backs uh, will follow up with a big old Ford, Tamaiti Williams. When I say big, 
We're talking 140 kilos big at only 22 years old. This guy is a massive unit. And you feel like he has to have a part to play for the All Blacks at some point. Because of all the positions you would say we are kind of like flush with top class depth. I'm not sure that our props are right up there. Like when you're thinking the best prop in the world, you're probably not thinking All Blacks guys at the moment. But uh, to Mighty Williams, he's only a young man, only 22. He's still got a lot of years before he hits his peak. Uh, he's got massive, massive potential. He's another one who's been uh, with the All Blacks 15 in the past. This season, as of round 12, he had played 12 games. 11 of those were starts. And he's kind of averaging 50-odd minutes a game. So he's getting, I guess, kind of standard propping numbers. At 140 kilos, you might think he's kind of one of those 40-minute guys where he plays a half and then he's done. But no, he's... He's getting over a half a rugby, which is, um, you know, pleasing to see. And he also doesn't concede that many penalties. I counted it was seven based on uh, his first 12 games, of which 11 will start. So for a prop, pretty good. Like if you're struggling at scrum time, your penalties conceded numbers is going to be high. And then his round the park stuff, which is secondary, is just really good. I mean, he's 140 kilos, and I don't know how many times I've mentioned that, but... That's going to help your your game around the park because um, he gets run meters, which is bizarre for a guy his size, but he's hard to stop. He's got the most defenders beaten of all the tight heads, most passes of all the tight heads, tackles at 84%. Um, what can I say? He's, uh, he's a big man. He can scrummage the Crusaders forward packs uh, pretty tidy. If you can learn your craft, it's probably one of the best places to do that. So, uh, yeah, it's a mighty Williams potential for an All Blacks berth at some point. I feel like it's got to come at some point, but whether it's 2023 uh, kind of remains to be seen. I'm not sure how long his contract is though, but at only 22, I would be surprised if he was looking abroad just yet, but you never know. Uh, another Crusader and another Ford and old Tom Christie. Tackling machine. Absolute tackling machine. He's 25. I believe his contract is also through until 2023. He kind of suffers from the fact that he plays in the position where the All Blacks captain plays him. So an injury to Sam Kane or Dalton Papali'i would certainly better his chances of making the All Blacks. He's been in the All Blacks 15, so I guess we know he's in the conversation. But he brings something a bit different from the other guys in terms of what he just excels at, and that is just defensive work. He generally starts in the number 7 jersey, and he generally plays 80 minutes. And he generally just makes tackle after tackle after tackle after tackle all day long. He is absolutely New Zealand's top tackler. He was the second top tackler uh, in Super Rugby Pacific this year. Uh, as of round 12, he'd made 141 and missed 10. So he's at 93% and he's winning around about a turnover a game. So just machine-like defense. Not many New Zealand guys kind of get close to him. There are some other guys, and he's also pretty safe. Doesn't cough up much ball in terms of turnovers conceded. Doesn't concede that many penalties, which is not always that common for a guy in his position when you're making tackles and you're trying to pill for the ball. Uh, and he's not had any yellow cards. So, yeah, kind of what you want in terms of a you know, just defensive unit, a guy you can rely on to just get up off the deck and make more tackles. Where he does suffer maybe a wee bit is his... Like, if he was a, a video game player, you put all his stats into his defensive game. He doesn't have as much going forward. Like his uh, run meters, his defenders beaten, clean breaks, all those kind of attacking stats, even passes, doesn't do as much as some of the other guys in kind of similar position. Like uh, Billy Harmon's another guy who's great defensively. He does a wee bit more on attack. He also jumps at line-out time, which Christie doesn't do. Duplessis karifi has got better attacking numbers than, uh, than Christie. So there's heaps of loose forward to New Zealand. But if you wanted... To kind of pick a back line going, I'm going to pick one guy who can bust tackles and one guy who can make tackles. You could kind of pick Christie and somebody else. So, yeah, depending on what the All Blacks, how they want to balance their back row, um, he's certainly an option. But as I said, if he doesn't make it at 25 years old with his contract up, I believe this year, uh, it wouldn't be surprising to see him look elsewhere as well because he's been pretty consistently like one of our top defensive powerhouses for a few years now. And last one, also with um, Sever Reese being injured, Emone Narawa, another Chiefs outside back. Jeez, he's been in good form as well. He's 23 years old. Um, he's not one of the guys who's played for the All Blacks 15. The other four 
have kind of been in that framework before, but Narawa is not quite in that frame. Does play right wing though. I mean, he's played fullback in the past, which maybe helps his game a little bit in terms of when you're thinking All Blacks limited selection spaces for an all uh, for a World Cup. You know, you want people who can cover multiple positions in a pinch. So he can cover fullback. He hasn't really played fullback this year, but he's played there in the past. So he's certainly got a better kind of kicking game than some of the other right wingers out there, or just wingers in general. But he's got six tries. Uh, he's the third outside back for defenders beaten, so he's a proper handful with ball in hand. Um, he's got better defense, like in terms of he doesn't miss that many tackles compared to some of the other wingers out there. I'm looking at a couple of Blues guys. But, like if you were to compare him kind of like head-to-head -head with like a Mark Talia, Talia beats him in pretty much all of the attacking categories, like defenders beating clean breaks, I think even tries. But, flip it on its head, like Narawa does more kicking and has better tackling. So, kind of at a World Cup, I mean, Narawa's defense ain't bad. Like, I'm comparing him to one of like the absolute top guys, and he's still like third kind of thing. So, yeah, you can probably get a slightly more balanced player out of Narawa, based on the stats anyway. But, um, yeah. He's another potential bolter. I don't know how long his contract is, but again, at only 23, uh, I would be surprised if he was to look abroad. But being born in Fiji, uh, if he doesn't get the All Blacks call up, he may be looking at a call from that neck of the woods as well. Maybe the All Blacks will just cap him to keep him out of Fiji's hands. You never know. But there you go. Uh, five players, potential bolters for the All Blacks in 2023. You guys let us know what your thoughts are. There's certainly other guys who you could keep in that framework for potential bolters as well. But you guys let us know your thoughts. Check out the article down in the description. And uh, yeah, I'll talk to you guys again soon.